The point of this video is to convince you to sign a petition in the notes below to improve multiple sclerosis research. For decades, we have used the EDSS, the Expanded Disability Status Scale, to measure disability in multiple sclerosis research, and this is often a required outcome by regulators like the FDA and EMA. But it's a huge problem for research and makes it very difficult to develop new products, particularly for older individuals with progressive multiple sclerosis. We should replace it with newer, modern, composite outcomes, such as the MS function composite. For a technical description of the EDSS and MSFC, please see separate videos linked below. Without further ado, I give you 10 reasons to trash the EDSS. Number one, it's unreliable with tremendous inter-rater variability. For example, this study on people with relatively low disability, EDSS 1 to 3.5, showed that variation from one doctor to another, the score could change by around 1.5. So imagine you see one examiner who says you have an EDSS of 1.5, and then the same day you're examined by a different physician who thinks you have double the EDSS of three. Ridiculous. Number two, at lower scores, the EDSS fluctuates wildly. It can go from 1 to 3 to 1.5 to 2.5, not necessarily due to relapses and not necessarily reflecting a major change in overall disability. So it can really create this messy data in clinical trials. Number three, by contrast, at higher levels of disability, the EDSS tends to stagnate. For instance, if someone is walking with a cane, they'll most likely have an EDSS of six. But let's say you can walk with a cane, but you could walk about two miles before having to rest, but you have progressive multiple sclerosis, and over the course of a clinical trial, you worsen somewhat, and now you can only walk about 800 meters. That's a major change that really affects your life, but you'll still have an EDSS of six. So how exactly can we prove that a drug or dietary intervention or vitamin supplement is better than placebo if the score is always going to be the same. And so the result is that clinical trials tend to exclude people with higher levels of disability because they're not as useful for providing good mathematical data for the trial. But this is not good because we need to know if drugs work in people with more disability, not just in people who are younger with less disability. Number four, it's not an additive scale and some disabilities tend to trump others. I'll explain what I mean. Let's say that you walk with a cane because your balance is not good, but you otherwise don't have a lot of disability. Maybe you could walk long distances, you have excellent cognitive function, you're working full time, you don't have pain, you don't have fatigue, you don't really have any other problems. You're actually doing pretty well aside from your mobility problem. Compare that to someone else who may also walk with a cane, but they have severe cognitive impairment. They have dementia. They require a full-time caretaker. Maybe they have blindness and various other disabilities, but it doesn't matter. The EDSS score is still 6.0 for both of these individuals. So that number 6.0 doesn't really reflect someone's overall disability. It's highly biased because the motor symptoms trump other disabilities. And that example transitions very well into number five. Cognitive function is not very well represented by the EDSS. In general, cognitive dysfunction is common in MS and can be quite disabling. I have a lot of patients who look great otherwise, but are disabled due to problems with multitasking or memory. Even though they may not be that obvious, we can measure them with formal cognitive examination in composite scales, such as the MS functional composite. We really need to give it more significance in our clinical trials. And along the same lines, number six, the EDSS is very strongly driven by lower extremity function. The legs tend to trump everything, vision, cognitive function, fatigue, memory, pain. These things are all, generally speaking, less important based on the way the EDSS is scored, particularly when it comes to higher levels of disability. Sure, the legs are important, but they're not the only thing affected by MS. Number seven, 
It's a very non-linear scale. For instance, the difference between an EDSS of 2.0 and 2.5 is very small most of the time. In fact, the person with the higher EDSS of 2.5 may actually be better off than the person with the lower score. However, when you get to higher levels of disability, each 0.5 can make a huge life-changing difference. For instance, the difference between an EDSS of 6.0 requiring a cane to walk 100 meters or an EDSS of 6.5 requiring a walker is often enormous and often it takes several years of progressive MS to go from 6 to 6.5. So in clinical trials when we're averaging numbers of together to look for average differences, it becomes very confusing and misleading. Number eight, sometimes the EDSS is a game of telephone. I'll explain what I mean. So at EDSS steps 4.5 to 6.0, the result is driven by walking distance, how far you can walk before you have to rest. But I'm not exactly gonna have my patient go outside and walk 300 or 400 meters, so how do I get that information? Well, I asked them, but a lot of people don't know exactly how far they could walk, and it may vary a lot day to day, depending on the weather, how tired they are, and what exactly is the point of having a professional do an objective exam if I'm just going to ask the patient and write down the number? It sort of defeats the whole purpose. Number nine, some items on the EDSS are neurologic signs, but don't reflect actual disability, like reflexes and Babinski sign. This is completely pointless away waste of time, let's measure actual disability that affects quality of life. Number 10, the EDSS is very difficult to do. You probably have to be a neurologist or physician's assistant or nurse practitioner or someone with significant experience performing a neurological exam. Think about the additional cost of clinical trials or the time consumption or the difficulty recruiting raters. By contrast, the MS functional composite could probably be performed fairly accurately by a high school student. Let's be practical and make clinical trials easier and faster to complete. So if you found these arguments to be convincing, please sign the petition below and share the petition and the video with anyone who cares about people living with MS. And once I get enough signatures, I will formally petition the FDA and other regulators to stop requiring the EDSS for phase three clinical trials and instead accept modern composite outcomes. And in the long run, I think we can get better research and more treatment options, particularly for older people living with progressive MS. Thank you for your time. Any questions or suggestions for future videos in the comments below.